Kid, seriously. Guys, a bit of sad news. I had to recently say goodbye to Sling TV, and that's something I've been a customer of for probably something like six years. It's an emotional decision, and one I went back and forth in a montage that could only be done adequately through a Rocky movie. But the reason is because every cloud has a silver lining, and in this silver lining is Hulu. I upgraded. I don't want to go into a commercial for the new service until they start paying our damn bills, but suffice to say that I and the Madrid girls have been ecstatic with the change. The best part for me is that it's given me access to three shows that I've wanted to watch for a long time, Musketeers, Legion, and Letterkenny. I haven't started watching Musketeers yet because I've been binging Legion, and I've also been binging Letterkenny. Go ahead. Is that the three Musketeers that from, from the early 90s? No, not that one. The Charlie all Sheen. For one, and... All for one, all for love. No. I actually saw that movie in the same movie theater as a girl that I wanted to go out with, but we didn't sit next to each other. We were the only people in the movie, me, her, and her dad. And I dated a girl who had that soundtrack. Moving on... Um, I haven't started watching Musketeers, like I said, but I have been binging Legion and, more importantly, Letterkenny. The show starts off similarly to South Park. Um, if you are familiar with how South Park started, they did a lot of shorts, and these guys did shorts uh, through YouTube. It stars a guy named Jared Kiso, who is known before as the sort of heartthrobby cop character from a Canadian show called 19-2. And it's, a, it's semi-autobiographical about his time growing up in a small town um, in Ontario. He plays a farmer in Letterkenny uh, who lives with his sister and hangs out with his buddies at a produce stand drinking beers and asking about deeper things in life, like a three-knuckler and the differences between brook and lake trout. There's also some epic dance and fight scenes with the loki, local hockey players, the skids who are a group of meth heads from down the street, and anyone else who wants to show that they might be the toughest guy in Letterkenny. Guys! I have no idea if you'd actually like this show, but it got me thinking. Do you have any foreign shows that you get into? And for the purposes of this question, I am counting Canada as foreign, even though it's a lot more similar to what I'm used to than, say, Mississippi. So I went a little different route, because I know you, you picked a Canadian show, and you you asked us about uh, foreign shows, and I, I in my head I rattled off a million things on BBC that I, I really, really like. I like Broad Church and I, I like and another BBC, but it's also Canadian. I liked Orphan Black a lot. Um and honestly the show I watched the most that's from an, another country is I watched the the Graham Norton show, which is a talk show, but it's a better talk show than the ones we get in America that's on BBC. So I decided to be a little more interesting than do that and throw out anything that's BBC or British. Related. So the show that I picked is available on Netflix. It's a German show. It's only had one season, but it's called Dark. And it is basically a family saga story over a multitude of generations, about three generations as far as we know in the first season, but that may change. And it, it kind of starts in the present day with two children going missing, and it, it shows the interconnectedness of these families and how they've been intertwined for generations upon generations, but it also has horror and sci-fi twists mixed in as well. So I stumbled upon it randomly. I do like foreign films, and I like I like foreign TV shows and all those things, but... As I get older and my kids get older and I have less time, I watch less of them because watching something with subtitles is a commitment because I have to read what's happening. It's not like putting on old episodes of 30 Rock and being able to do other stuff while it's in the background. And we know how you feel about reading. I do not like reading, so that's a major struggle for me. You and the president have that in common. I know. We're, we're exactly the same, basically. And uh, so... But I turned this show on, I watched the first episode, and then I finished the whole season in like two, three days. Like, I just steamrolled through it because I could not stop, and now I think I have to wait another year for the next season to go. And not only was I enthralled by the characters, but just, you you know, the small town German life. Like, there's a lot, it's just, it, it the landscape looked different, it's actually filmed in Germany. So it was just interesting to see a different perspective, a different type of filmmaking, uh, it it was really fun, and it's it's on Netflix, so basically anyone can go grab it and watch it. Okay, so for me, uh, a little background first. So as a child, I had difficulty with my ears. Um, I had four sets of PE tubes that were put in for regulating fluid or, or whatever. Um, I also blew my eardrums out. So as a result of all of this, I actually have 
some significant hearing damage. And it, it, it's a little odd in that it's not that I can't hear things. Um, I can actually hear pretty well. I just can't distinguish what I'm hearing. So I'll, I'll hear noise, but I can't tell you what that noise is. Now, the reason I bring this up is because this does me in for a lot of British BBC shows uh, because they will be talking and I can hear them talking and I cannot understand what they're saying. And granted, you know, people always have trouble with thick accents and, you know, wording and phraseology that isn't familiar. But even with that, um, I have legitimate difficulty um, with BBC shows. I still watch them. I still enjoy them. But there's always a little bit of a level of frustration that goes along with it that uh, prevents me from ever just completely sitting back, relaxing, and enjoying those kind of shows. Do you not have subtitles or closed captioning options? I'm not. I'm not watching TV for subtitles. Touche. Okay. Um, I I don't mind subtitles in in movies, but. I, I don't want to deal with it with TV shows because, like you said, I want to be able to get up and move around. And, you know, TV watching is very passive activity as opposed to watching movies, which is a little more active viewing on my part. I was thinking about this. Well, what, you know, non-British shows, basically. And I'm glad that Maya allowed us to include Canada because that came up with my, my greatest, my great answer from when I was a kid and it leads into my answer now. And so when I was a kid, it was SCTV. And did you just nod your head on that one too, Luke? I mouthed that one too. And I just wrote your other answer down. Oh, right. Well, you probably know the other answer because I've talked to you about it before. But, you know, I mean, SCTV, um, they used to have reruns on Nick at Night when we were little kids. And, you know, of course, it's Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara and Sean Candy and Martin Short when he was funny. And just this insane amount of talent in really off the wall skits that were really, unlike Saturday Night Live, really more willing to play with the genre and create long running stories through these you know, 10 minute skits. Um, and it was really inventive and, and really crazy. And two of the best products of that are in what is now my current favorite uh, foreign TV show, which is Shit's Creek, which is available on Netflix. And that stars Eugene Levy's eyebrows and Catherine O'Hara doing the greatest non-accent accent in the history of television. Uh, how she hasn't won multiple Academy Awards for that role, I, or excuse me, Emmys, I don't understand. Because it, it's, I, I, I could literally talk for you know, minutes on end about her performance, about how much she's doing comedically in such subtle ways that you, you don't realize at first blush. Um, so for those who don't know, this is show is uh, it basically starts off with kind of an arrested development premise in this very rich family has everything taken from them and they're forced to flee to live in a motel in this little town called Shits Creek. Um, and it's about their misadventures as these, you know, now, you know, um, humiliated and embarrassed you know, millionaires are trying to live among common folk. And it it's hilarious. It's not. The joke writing isn't necessarily as sharp as something like Arrested Development, but the performances are uniformly great in very low-key, interesting ways. It also has more of a heart without defaulting into schmaltz, like a lot of American sitcoms will. Um, it manages to be endearing without selling out the story for an awe moment. Um, and so that that's a show um, my wife and I both my wife loves it more than I do. I that's probably her favorite show, period, uh, from any country right now. But um, it's great. It's uh, mostly episodic. So you can basically turn into any episode. Um, you don't need to watch them in order. And, and it's really great for repeat viewing and kind of casual viewing while you're doing other things. And it's written and co-starring Eugene Lovey's kid who might, yes, might fun. who might be hairier than he is. <laughs> The, yes. The, yeah. um, and and who and who maybe has the best facial expression for disgust that I've ever seen in a, a comedy. Um, yeah. His daughter's also in it, too. Um, she's the waitress, Twyla. Oh, OK. 
Um, well, and the, the thing I like about Eugene Levy in this is it's not the American Pie dad character that he mm-hmm. played for basically 20 straight years or 15 straight years. It's it's him doing something completely different because he's way more talented than he gets credit for. He kind of gets shoehorned into that one role, and this is not that one role. Yeah, it, it's it's everything's great. If I had a complaint, it would be Chris Elliott, who I always feel like is just Chris Elliott in everything he does. And that 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 persona, I always feel kind of clashes a little bit with the rest of the show. But that aside, it's fantastic. They're done four seasons now. I think they're about to start the fifth one on the CBC. So we'll be getting it sometime next year. So is there an episode where an alien throws up on Chris Elliott? <laughs> Spewy. No, no, that that. That would be too much for my poor heart to handle, I think. Or, or, or if they had Brian Doyle Murray in there at any point in time, that, but that would probably push me over the top. Well, speaking of being pushed over the top, that's about the end of this episode. Luke, where can they find you? You said the over the top thing, and I tried so hard to rack my brain for a way to work in the Sylvester Stallone arm wrestling movie over the top, but I couldn't pull it off. You can find me at Luke underscore Neitzel, N-E-I-T-Z-E-L on Twitter. Mark? And, well, and even before you said over the top, I was trying to figure out a way to make a clever REM stand joke in there, but uh, that's not going to happen. So uh, you can find me at Wink Martindale 5 on Twitter. And once again, this is Maya Madrid reminding you that if you're going to try to find me on Twitter, hey, figure it out. And together, we're Kids Seriously. You can find us at Kid Seriously, and we're out of here. Bye. See you. Thanks for listening to Kid Seriously. If you didn't completely hate us, feel free to hit like, subscribe, or tell a friend about the show. If you want to write to us and tell us how much we suck, or just ask a question, you can reach us at kidseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, hit us up on Twitter at KidSeriously. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.